One of the common questions I receive both on YouTube and when I stream on Twitch is about how to play more consistently day to day. I'll often hear things like, some days I play really well and get a lot of kills, and other days I can barely do anything. This is actually pretty common for just about everybody. We all have off days and on days, but there are many things to consider when it comes to your overall consistency as a player. Some elements are totally out of your control, while others you actually have quite a bit of influence over. And in this video, we're going to cover both groups. Let's first start with the things that are totally out of your control. We're talking about Destiny after all, which has quite a few things that can throw you off, and in many cases, you have absolutely no say over them. For example, in regular matchmaking, you can't choose the map. What happens if you get unlucky and have to play your least favorite maps over and over again in PvP? This might lead to an overall worse play session compared to other days when you get to play your favorite maps back to back to back. Consistency is built on controlling as many variables as possible in order to keep things the same day to day and session to session. The problem of course in Destiny is that the opponents you'll face will likely change every game. This is one of the biggest factors in the outcome of each game and it's something you can't really influence. Let's say you're playing Trials of Osiris and it's a good week with the loot's pretty desirable and it's on a good map. For example, a couple weekends ago we had Dead Cliffs as the map with pretty good loot rewards for 3, 5, and 7 wins. Naturally, Trials weekends with these types of conditions are going to attract a lot more players to play and result in a much higher overall population. This also means that you're less likely to match those incredibly sweaty players every game and maybe even less cheaters too. And in turn, you'll probably have a much better overall experience where you get more kills, have better stats, and get more wins. On the flip side, this past weekend was on Convergence, which is a less desirable map according to many players. The loot was pretty bad, and to make things even worse, there's also Iron Banner going on, which is naturally going to cut down the casual player portion of the Trials population quite a bit. The result was that these games were generally much harder overall and you're more likely to come across cheaters and really tough opponents. So let's review these two situations. If you played much worse this weekend compared to the previous weekend with a good trial setup, were you actually inconsistent as a player? I'd argue that a lot of what went against you was somewhat out of your control and more a matter of the caliber of opponents that you faced. Your actual consistency as a player probably isn't the main thing that's holding you back. Even just playing on a different map that maybe doesn't suit your particular playstyle as much could really hurt you. So if these are some examples of things that you can't control, what variables do you actually have the ability to influence and dial in to become a more consistent player? I think there are probably a lot more than you might imagine. Let's dig through a few. First off, is your physical setup the same from session to session? Whether you're playing with a mouse and keyboard or a controller, having a similar gaming setup each time you come to play can make a big difference. Those little changes in your posture and how close or far you are from each piece of your gaming setup can have more impact than you might guess. I'll link to a great video from one of my favorite YouTube channels, FPS Coach, in the description where Ron Rambo Kim shows a ton of small details to optimize the ergonomics of your setup. These are elements like the height of your chair in relation to your desk, how far you are from your monitor or your TV, the position of your head and neck, and the angles of your body. All of these little details matter when you want to become a more consistent player. The advice I see most often from physical therapists when it comes to your posture is that you generally want to have your body positioned in 90 degree angles when sitting at a desk. Next time you sit down for a play session, set a reminder on your phone every 30 minutes to do a posture check and evaluate if you're falling into any bad habits. Over time, these poor body positions can lead to some significant issues if they're not corrected. The next thing to check on is your physical and mental conditioning. Are you feeling good? Did you eat a good nutritious meal recently? Have you been getting any exercise? Are you sleeping enough? Do you have any external stressors like a big project, test, or relationship troubles that might be weighing on you? What time of day is it? Is it early or late? Each of these variables can have a huge impact on how well you play, and maybe it's not fair to compare yourself at your best compared to when you're not taking quite as good of care of yourself. Instead, do what you can to put yourself in the best situation that you can, given your specific circumstances, and give yourself a break if things aren't going your way. Another huge factor when it comes to your consistency is your decision making in the game. Are you sticking to a familiar loadout that you're really comfortable with? Or trying something new that might seem good or fun, but it's actually throwing you off? Every little build decision like what weapons, armor, subclasses, perk options, and even playstyle that you choose can have a major impact on your game. 
Variety is awesome, and it's one of my favorite things about playing games like Destiny, but if you're really trying to improve as a player, I often recommend sticking to just a few different loadouts and trying to master them for a while. If you know your particular build and subclass incredibly well, your brain can start to make those split-second decisions more comfortably and you'll more easily enter the flow state. If you haven't seen my video yet about getting into the zone, I'll link it on screen here as well as in the description for you to check out. It might really help you out in this area. As an example, when I choose to snipe in Destiny, I'll often try to stick with just one sniper with the exact same scope, zoom magnification, and perks for a long period of time so that I can develop muscle memory and allow my brain to figure out all those tiny details which can then be processed in autopilot mode during a stressful clutch situation. Another major component of becoming a consistent player is having a well-rounded set of skills so that you're comfortable in any situation. For example, some players are great snipers but really struggle in those close quarter battles. Others are nasty with a shotgun but have no primary shot whatsoever and can't win their mid-range duels to save their life. If you spend some time evaluating your strengths and weaknesses as a player and work on improving those areas where you struggle, you're less likely to have those off games because it will be harder for enemies to find and exploit your weaknesses. In addition to improving your game directly, this knowledge of your own tendencies is helpful because you can double down on your strengths by communicating how you like to play with a team and come up with a strategy that works for each of you to play at your best together. A great way to review your own gameplay is by recording it or streaming it even if it's not to any viewers, and then go back later and watch for your mistakes. We even have a video review channel in my Discord server where people regularly upload gameplay sessions for review, and in the future I plan to turn a few of these into YouTube videos. You can join our server over at discord.gg slash pattycakes and look for the gameplay review channel. You also need to work on improving your in-game habits and fundamentals to become more consistent. These are things like checking the radar often for threats and having enough game and map awareness that you know the spots where someone's likely to be located based only on a radar ping and your current angle of view. Having a well-rounded game where you're competent with your primary shot, your special weapons, your map and game awareness, communication with your teammates, and the ability to keep a clear head under pressure are all components that make you tougher to face as an opponent and will lead to more consistently good games. The reason these fundamentals are so important when it comes to consistency is that when you play lower skilled opponents, you might actually get away with your bad decision making, but in reality, you're consistently making dumb plays. Once you start facing tougher opponents who know how to exploit these mistakes and punish you for them, you're going to really feel it. However, if you develop and practice good habits, there will be less of a shock to your system when you do match those good players. This is actually one of the things I've always found hardest when playing modes like Trials and Competitive Survival. Over the last several seasons, I can't even explain how many times we've been cruising along through teams, gaining a whole bunch of glory in competitive or wins and trials, while we're playing pretty loose because most of the opponents we played didn't have the skill required to exploit our mistakes. But as soon as we matched a good team, it would be a big shock to our system and we'd often lose a few rounds and be in a tough spot for a comeback. It can take some time to adjust playstyles and start doing those fundamentals properly again, and often that can be a bit too late when you're not ready to match a really good team. One great way to get practice against better players consistently is to participate in 3v3 private match scrims. There are a few different services out there like Faceit that you can join to play, but those might be a little bit too intimidating if you're just getting your feet wet. My community discord server actually holds private match scrims every Saturday, which are open to players of all different skill levels. We try to match newer players with more experienced ones to provide a good teaching experience. It's always a lot of fun, and if you're interested in joining us, you can hop into the discord at discord.gg slash pattycakes and read the scrim rules channel to get all the details. As you get better by practicing and mastering these fundamentals, you're going to have less holes in your gameplay and less flaws for your opponents to exploit which will lead to more consistently good games. You also need to have the ability as a player to be dynamic in your playstyle. If you're always making the exact same plays round after round in Trials for example, the enemy is going to catch on to you and be able to counter you if they're smart. You have to have a lot of options at your disposal to mix things up on the fly. It also helps if you play with the same teammates as often as you can. When you play in a random group, you're in this situation where you're matching random opponents and you have no idea how they're going to play, and if you aren't familiar with your teammates, you're not going to know their tendencies as well. It makes for a really tough time to be consistent as a player 
when so many different things are up in the air. However, if you do play with the same group of people frequently, you're going to start learning their tendencies and know how to play around them and what they like to do as a player. Over time, this is incredibly powerful and it's the reason that you see so many top tournament teams playing with essentially the same roster all the time. Over the past few years, the Destiny players Panda, Sonic, and Vince won several tournaments in a row as a static lineup, and aside from them each being incredibly talented players individually, I think a big part of their success was actually playing together for such a long span of time and really understanding the tendencies of each other so they knew how to adapt instantly when a given circumstance would arise. The final thing I'd like to cover when it comes to consistency is setting up specific practice sessions. If you're a mouse and keyboard player, you have aim trainers like Kovacs at your disposal to specifically work on your mouse aim, but on controller your options are a bit more limited. A few of the better controller players that I know spend a decent amount of time in PvE areas with a lot of low health enemies like the Shadow Thrall Room and the Whisper mission just to work on their rapid aiming skill. Regardless of how you choose to practice, I think this intentional time spent trying to improve is so valuable and it's going to make you a much more consistent player overall when it comes to your gunplay. I can tell you from personal experience, when I take several days off of aim training, my aim starts to feel really shaky, but as soon as I put in that time to train, I feel so much sharper. It's like going to the gym, but for your gun skill. I have a few past videos covering aim training that I'll link in the description, and I also plan to make a new one with some updates regarding what I've learned from aim training consistently for almost a full year now. So be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss that one. Even if you're subscribed, for some reason YouTube won't always show you new videos in your subscription box, so those notifications really help to make sure that you don't miss a video. By the way, I also stream on Twitch every week and I'd love to chat with you about gameplay and becoming a more consistent player while I'm live. You can catch me over at twitch.tv slash pattycakespc. I'm also getting more active on Twitter and Instagram lately, posting regular gameplay clips and highlights. You can follow me at pattycakesgg on both platforms. So if you like this video, I have another recommendation for you. This one covers advanced movement techniques for FPS games like slicing the pie and paying attention to angle management. It's the top video over on the right side. The bottom one is whatever YouTube's algorithm thinks you might like best. That's all for now, catch you guys next time.